Welcome to the Raising Smart Kids podcast. I'm your host, Yang Pratt, and each week we'll explore ways in which the arts can help you raise a smarter kid. I'll be sharing ways the arts can propel your child's learning and interviewing top artists, educators, and entrepreneurs. These guests will share why the arts are so very important to your child, along with actionable ideas you can easily implement into your already busy schedule. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast here on iTunes and share us with a friend. For extra tips on raising smart kids, head on over to artsmartparenting.com and click on the live tab. Hello, hello, and welcome to day number one of our adventure together on how to unleash your child's eight superpowers and propel learning through the arts. My name is Yang Pratt, and I'm super excited to be on this journey with you on raising a superhero. These videos are short little bite-sized bits of information you can take on the go. As a parent, I know your time is very precious and limited, and I wanted to make sure that if you're not able to take the book with you wherever you go, you have these videos at your disposal, which you can play in the car or while you're waiting in line at the grocery store, and they're just little bite-sized mini lessons all about how you can unleash your child's special superpowers. As you may recall, there are eight different learning styles, or as I like to call them, superpowers. Each of us has eight of these inside of us, and we all have strengths and weaknesses across those eight areas. Schools teach and test primarily to only two of these, so as parents, it's sometimes difficult to understand what our children are not doing well in school and what those test scores really mean. So throughout our time together, we're really going to dive a little bit deeper into each of the eight superpowers, how to identify them, and how to use the arts to help propel learning for our kids, for our kiddos. Today, we're going to talk more specifically about visual spatial superpowers. And I found this great cartoon on the internet, and I think it sums up what a visual spatial learner is all about. This little boy is painting, he's building, there's a puzzle on the ground, and his parents walk in and and they think, and they say to themselves, gosh, I think he may be visual spatial. And yes, that really sums up what a visual spatial learner is all about. They really see things and are able to create things sometimes out of nothing. Just to give you a little bit of perspective on each of our lessons, we're going to be, I'll be showing you a couple of different famous learners that are in each of the superpowers so you have a better understanding and a better grasp of what it really means to have these superpowers. So the first famous person I put into our visual spatial learners is the architect Frank Lloyd Wright. And if you think about what an architect does, literally they'll see a space in this example and transform it into something completely different. Likely, this particular building was just all forest and trees. And then with his very spatial, visual spatial superpowers, he was able to place this house or this building into a location where you would least likely expect it. And it's such a beautiful representation of what can be created by those people who who possess visual spatial superpowers. The next person I want to talk about is Pablo Picasso. And I'm sure most of you have seen this painting or have know about Starry Night. And to me, I, I love this painting and, and I love the texture, I love the colors, and it just looks so tranquil to me. And again, this is something that people with visual spatial superpowers are able to do. They're able to tell a story through their work. And a couple of the potential careers for visual spatial superheroes are artists, engineers, inventors, choreographers, and of course, architects. And here's a great quote about visual spatial superpowers. Visual spatial thinkers need to see 
to think. They may enjoy activities such as drawing, building, designing, and I would even say playing video games as it's very much a visual activity. And of course, inventors can really create something out of nothing. All right, how do we use the arts then to propel our, our kids' visual spatial superpowers? We can get them into photography classes, painting classes, drawing classes, or even designing classes. If you do a quick Google search with your name, your city name, the area, and classes of these nature, you should be able to find a great variety of classes in your local area. Again, my suggestion would be to look for schools that match your own philosophy of your child's learning. You're here wanting to really unleash your child's superpowers. So make sure you find a school that really believes the same thing, that each of us learns differently and learning is not a one size fits all activity. You're going to need teachers who are able to understand your child and really dive deep into how he or she learns best to make the experience much more rich and enjoyable. If you do happen to find activities that offer these classes, please send me an email, yong, Y-O-N-G, at raisingasuperherobook.com, and I'll be sure to add them to our resources page of our website. Here's a couple things you can do at home with your visual spatial superhero. You can create models out of all sorts of media, including clay, blocks, pillows, really anything that you have in your house, you can create a model. You can depict information that your child is learning via charts or graphics. Something very visual will really help your child learn at a much deeper level and have much more enjoyment for what they're learning. In this day and age, using TV and multimedia seem almost second nature to kids, but they can really be used as learning tools to help visual spatial learners get to that next level. So just to recap, let's talk about what visual spatial superpowers are. For these learners, a picture really is worth a thousand words. They have a keen understanding of the space around them and are usually great navigators. And often what they see in their mind's eye is a three-dimensional image of something they, they would like to create or that's existing today. So this wraps up our lesson number one on visual spatial superpowers. Tomorrow in your inbox, we'll have a lesson all about bodily kinesthetic superpowers. Until then, I wish you a fantastic day of discoveries and I'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in to the Raising Smart Kids 2.0 podcast. To really accelerate your ability to unleash your child's superpowers and raise smarter kids through the arts, we're creating loads of new resources, ways to connect, and ways to celebrate your successes. You can join our free Facebook community by visiting theartsmartparent.com or just search up Raising Smart Kids 2.0 on Facebook. I look forward to seeing you inside our community.